Hi, I'm Cassie with Doshi Quilts for Love. Today I'd like to show you how to make a surgical cap. I had been making masks when a nurse friend said that they're actually more in need of caps. If you have a nurse or doctor friend, check in with them and see what they need. Or call your local hospital, urgent care, and find out what they're lacking. You can make masks in bulk and take them to Joanne and they'll get them where they're needed. But there's something about knowing the person you're helping. That's just my two cents. Now, let's dive in. When I was asked to make the caps, I got online and looked for a tutorial. I only found a couple. One looked complicated and the other was not the style the nurse asked for. I found a pattern and written directions at the link below. It took me well over an hour to make my first one, so I thought a video tutorial might save you all some time. You'll need to print the pattern and check that the test line, right here, check that the test line is the right size. I put mine on a cereal box to make it sturdier, knowing I'd make several of these. Here are the supplies you're going to need for one cap. You're going to need an exterior piece of fabric for your headband and your headpiece. And I folded mine right sides together and went ahead and ironed down the side just so I had a nice flat edge for my fold. And then you're also going to need a piece with the fabric for your interior lining piece. Um, You need about 10 inches to do a band and a headpiece. You can put them on the fabric like this. You only need the band of the interior piece, so about eight inches would, would do okay for that. You're going to need scissors and or a rotary cutter. You'll need pens. You'll need a marking pen and something sharp to push out your corners. You can use a lollipop pencil with no lead, that purple thing. And you will also possibly need a ruler, the thread on your machine, and an iron and ironing board. I think that about sums it up for our supplies and we'll get started making this. All right, so I've got my exterior fabric right sides together folded and I have put my fold line of my pattern on there. I'm gonna hold it down and I'm gonna trace it with my marking pen. Mine does go a little bit into the selvage and yours might too. That can actually be trimmed up just a little bit if you need to and the ties are still plenty long enough. Okay, and then I've got a mark here where it says sew to this mark. I found when I made my first one that that wasn't um, close enough to where I end up sewing the headpiece on. So I moved my mark in a half inch. You might need to make a test one and see where you need to make your mark, but I have found that this half, half inch further up onto the head part uh, was plenty of, plenty of extra space. You would go ahead, if you only have scissors, and trace this line down here to cut along, but to save time, I'm just gonna use my ruler and use my rotary cutter to cut it. I did measure this earlier, it's seven inches, so I'm not just guessing over here on where to put it. I'm gonna line my marks up from the tip of my band to the edge of my fabric and then just use my rotary cutter. Oh, this didn't quite stay right by my ruler, so. Okay, then I'll take my scissor to cut the rest of the pattern out. Oh, actually, before you do that, you could put the headpiece on just so your fabric stays together better. Trace it. And then if you're going to cut out both layers to make two hats, you'll want to pin them together so that they don't shift when you pick it up to cut. Now I'll go ahead and cut out my band. I try to keep my fabric pretty close to the table just so it doesn't shift as much. I found that when I picked it up and tried to cut it, the bottom half of my fabric moved a lot. Okay, and then I have my headpiece here, but I actually already have one prepared, but you would go ahead and cut those out. I'm gonna move my exterior fabrics over to the side 
And then I actually folded my interior piece wrong sides together because when I open these up, this crease will fit into the crease of my exterior fabric. I'll show you that here in just a minute. So this one, again, I've got my fold pressed just so that my template sits on there nicer. And I line it up again. And I do the same thing that I just did on my exterior fabric. Make my mark. Cut a long length. Did it again. Okay. And then I will cut out the rest. And again, you do not need a headpiece for your lining fabric. It's just the ex exterior fabric that you need that for. Now I'm going to mark on my interior lining fabric. I need to move this mark because we're gonna put right sides together for sewing and that mark's not gonna show anymore. So I fold it over or just scooch it down a little bit and mark on my interior side. And then on that interior side. And then I've got the marks for when I line this up. I'll open up my exterior fabric my interior fabric, put them right sides together, and I can just put the folds, nest the folds together, and then I know that it's right, the pattern matches just right. And then I go ahead and I put pins in where I put my sew line marks. So I know where to start and stop on my on my sewing machine. And then I put a few pins in here and there just so that my fabric doesn't shift while I'm over there sewing or when I move it to my sewing machine. We're going to use a 3 8 seam allowance. If you're a quilter, you're used to the fourth of an inch, and if you're a clothes maker, I think it's five-eighths. I don't make a lot of clothes, so I could totally be wrong on that, but we'll do a three-eighths inch. So we've got it all pinned, and we are ready to go to our machine and sew this together. And I've got my sewing machine all set up. I'm using gray thread just because it'll go with more options of what I'm making and all the different fabrics I'm going to end up using. I just stick to the standard stitch length that my machine automatically turns on with, and that's what I'm using. I'm gonna start with my first mark that I've pinned and put it up underneath my needle, and I'm gonna line the edge of my fabric up with the 3 8 mark. Then I'll take out my pin and start sewing. Go a few stitches and back stitch. And just sew right along. So right along your edge of your fabric at the 3 8 Okay, so I ended up trimming one and not the other when I cut them off earlier. So I'm gonna go to the pink edge of my fabric and then I'll just trim it up when I'm finished. Just 
my fabric shifted a little bit, so I'm just gonna fix that and keep going. I'm coming up on my mark and my pin of where I need to sew to. I will sew to the mark and then I will back stitch a little bit and we'll be finished with this part. Okay, so I'm going to iron my seam and then iron open this part so that it lies flatter when I open everything up to right side out it. I just kind of push to the darker fabric right inside this middle part. And that's the part that's going to be on the person's forehead. You don't have to do this. I just, I like the way it looks better. Okay, and then we're going to get our pencil, our purple thing or our lollipop and we're going to turn these corners out so we'll move over to the table to do that okay. so before I start turning this right sides out I'm going to trim off the corners just to take some of the bulk out and that's where I can trim off some of that selvage that ended up in my seam allowance I'll go ahead and do that to both ends And I put my thumb up in there. I don't know. There's lots of different ways to try and turn things right sides out. But... And then I will turn it right sides out. Ah! Stuck. <laughs> Oops. And then just to prove that you can, I could use my lollipop this time. Although the reason I don't like the lollipop is because the stick's not as long as my pencil is. So, yeah, but you can use that. And then you also have a snack for later. And just point those corners out, get them nice and poked out, and then we are ready to prep our headpiece. So I've got my headpiece right sides down to my ironing board and we're going to fold the flat piece inside. The directions say a centimeter, which when I measured with my non-metric ruler, it was three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna mark that with my pen. Three eighths all the way. And then fold it over. You don't have to mark it with your pen if you don't want to. That just helps me because I can kind of see my pen through the through the fabric, and that's three eighths. And I'm gonna iron that down. And then we're gonna do the second time. It's gonna be two centimeters, which I assume is six eighths because one centimeter was three eighths, but. It worked when I made all the other ones, so we're just making that assumption. Don't want to melt my ruler, that'd be bad. Ooh, look at me go. There is six eighths. And I'm going to iron that. And then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew right along the edge, not even an eighth of an inch, just right along the edge, and I'll back stitch at both ends. I'm gonna put this up underneath my needle real close to the edge. And I can't see my eyeballs are old. Okay, and then I'm going to back stitch. And back stitch again. And then when I'm finished, I'm going to trim off these threads because this is actually the only thread that will show um, on the top of the person's head. So if you wanted to, you could use white. I just, I'm gonna make a bunch of these and I wanna be able to 
assembly line it so I just put gray on my machine and that's what I'm gonna do but yeah that's the only stitching that'll show in your whole thing so I could have used white and now we are ready to pin this to our band so we're going to take our band piece and put it X2 fabric face up because your head band piece, your head piece connects to your headband piece not the lining and then I'm just gonna push this seam up a little bit to make it nice and flat and make sure that my edges match up here. We still have this crease from when we ironed it to make our pattern. So now what we're gonna do is take our headpiece and fold it in half, and we'll put a crease in it to match up to the crease in our band fabric. We'll match those up and we'll start pinning. We're gonna need a lot, we'll just dump those out. All right, so we had to move the camera because my arm was in the way and you couldn't see what I was doing. And since we're pinning curves, and that's pretty tricky, I wanna make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna move this fabric of my headpiece, and I might have to pull just a little bit. I wanna make sure that everything is lined up on the edge, the lining, the, the band, exterior and the headpiece. I want all the edges lined up and I'm gonna put a pin in. And this is the trickiest part. This is the longest part of the whole thing, at least for me. I'm not a big curve sewer. So then I'm gonna pull the fabric again, make sure everything's lined up and put in another pin. I try to go about every inch, might be a little less. We're eyeballing it here. Make sure that you don't accidentally pin your band into your hat. That's a very easy thing to do. And we just keep going around the edge. And you use as many pins as you need to or as you have. I can only do two at a time and then I run out of pins. But where I can, I do try to do lots of multiple things so that I can stay at my sewing machine for longer and not be up and down and up and down. I've got five prepped and ready to go so that I can make five in a row. But when I get to this part, I can only do two and sew two and then I run out of pins. So we sewed down to there, but when we turned it right sides out, it folds this fabric in a little bit over here. So you just wanna make sure that you're pinning the edge of your headpiece to where your sew line ended and not leaving this gap here. So that's just something to be aware of as you're, as you're pinning it. So we're gonna pin about two more times. And it also, your headpiece doesn't quite curve it, but that's okay, it'll end up in the seam allowance. I just pulled myself. Okay, and then we're gonna come around and we're gonna do the other side. Let's make sure we didn't pin our headband in there. Okay, we're good. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, we just line everything up like we did on the first side. And after you get a first, the first few pinned together, for some reason, I think this side matches up a lot easier and a lot quicker than the first one. Maybe it's already because it's making the arc shape to the other side of the hat. I'm still making sure that all three layers are lining up on the edge. A 
Okay, and I'm getting to where this isn't quite gonna match up, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin that, and then I'll come back and let that fabric kind of smooth it between the last couple of pins. And it might put a little pucker in there, but that's gonna be at back at the per at the back of the person's head, so it shouldn't be that noticeable. My other side lined up real nice. That was fun. So we've got it all pinned, and that's what it's gonna look like before we take it to the sewing machine. And again, you can just make sure that the headband didn't get pinned into your sewing area, and we're ready to go to the machine and sew it down. All right, I'm gonna start at the back of my headpiece, and just be very careful because you've got a lot of pins sticking out. You are more than likely going to get poked a little bit just be as careful as you can. We're doing a 3 8 seam allowance again. So I'm gonna line up the flat part of my headpiece underneath my needle, and I'm going to back stitch three or four times um, on that, on the part, on the fold over of the hat piece because that is where there's gonna be lots of wear and tear. That's where it goes on the back of their head and they pull on the, the ties to tie it around the back of their head. So we wanna make sure that that's nice and secure. So I'll just do four or five stitches, back, go forward, back, go forward. And then we're just gonna go very slowly around the curve and try to keep our fabric lined up on the 3 8 line as we go around. This is not a fast process. This is not like sewing down the straightaway. As we're getting to the front of the headpiece, this is the hardest part where it's the most curved, so you wanna take your time and just go as slow as you need to go. I'm just making sure that the interior lining is not getting caught up underneath my presser foot. That's as I've pivoted around the corner. wrong pin. And again, as we get back to the back edge of the headpiece, we're going to back stitch four or five times. reason we did that when I was saying that's the stress point that's where they're pulling it onto the back of their head so that's what I meant by wanting to back stitch a lot to give it some extra strength so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to zigzag stitch into that seam we just made just to help hold down all the layers and keep it from fraying and putting lots of strings in the person's hair and face so I'm gonna set my machine to do a zigzag stitch and go back around and do that. Make sure you're not zigging and zagging across your seam line. And then my machine has a button that'll knot it or you can back stitch a little bit. And then you turn it right sides out and you have a surgical cap. Okay, so I turned it all right side out, but I wanna make sure there aren't any threads sticking out. Oh, I have a few here, so I'm just gonna trim those up. You can use snips, you can use scissors, whatever you want.
So if you feel like this is too deep or, you know, it's not going to fit, it's too big, it can be folded up before it's tied back behind the person's head. Um, so, like that. And it would just tie behind your head. So that is one surgical cap. So what you can do if you make one and you feel confident that you, this is something you'd like to do and help out and make, what I like to do is assembly line it. That's what I said earlier. So I have prepped, you know, I don't know, like five, six of these ready to go. So I cut all five, I pinned them to this point, I'll take them to my machine, I'll sew all five, then I'll, you know, I'll prep all the head pieces. So the next thing I'm probably gonna do before I even sew is get all of the head pieces uh, folded over and top stitched and then those are ready to pin and ready to go and then I can make five surgical caps in an hour, hour and a half because I can just, I don't have to worry about moving from spot to spot to spot. I can do all the sewing here, all the ironing here, all the pinning here. And then there you go, I've got a lot made really quickly. So hopefully this tutorial is helpful and you are able to get a handle on curves and make some surgical caps to help out your local nurses and doctors and whoever else might be needing those. So thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a great day.